Good evening. I'm Eugene Chan, and we're excited to bring this lift edition of Straight Talk to you. We are shooting on site at the Hong Kong Golf Club here at Fanling with two golf professionals who will give us a perspective of teeing off here at Live Hong Kong. Our first guest is Wade Omsby, who is an Australian professional golfer who was twice the Hong Kong Open champion and so is very familiar with Fanling. He also played in the inaugural Live Golf Invitational Series. Welcome, Wade. Thanks for having me on. Wade, you told me you've been here to Hong Kong 15 times. How do you feel like coming back again for the Live Hong Kong? Well, it's always nice coming to Hong Kong. It's a fantastic city, but it's an iconic venue too. So it's always nice coming through the clubhouse here and um, playing Hong Kong Golf Club. Right, how, how is Live different from the other tournaments you have played in the world? Yeah, well, I guess Live is shorter, more exciting, more vibrant. We've got, we've got music going here today. You can already hear it out there. Um, the age demographic is definitely kind of pointed at the younger or a more diverse kind of age group. So um, no, it's fun. It's great to be a part of. Yeah, we know that the lift 50 we actually means 54. What exactly 54 denotes in golf in this in this game? Yeah, so I guess 54 is 54 holes, which is three which is three rounds. So traditionally we play four rounds, which is 72 holes, but uh, lives short in the format. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it, uh, it makes it a tighter package, and um, we have a shotgun start, which is different. Um, so it's just a more concise, um, better product. Right. Let's talk from the player's point of view. I mean, we all know that Fang Ling is one of the oldest courts in the world. And how do, how do they feel coming here? I know that people are quite enthusiastic. Yeah, well, it's been interesting. Like this week, there's um, 54 players here this week. A lot of guys have already been here before. Probably, I'd say, a third of the field have played this venue before. But there's been a lot of guys that haven't been here before. So it's nice to see their take on the place and how unique this golf course is. It's quite a narrow golf course, it's quite a short golf course by numbers, but it requires a unique style of play which all the players have raved about and they have enjoyed the challenge and um, we've seen some great golf out there this week and it's nice to see how they tackle the golf course. Right, and we saw that there are many uh, sort of signboards everywhere. One of them says shotgun. What exactly meant by that? We don't usually get that in golf tournaments, do we? Yeah, exactly. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's been interesting the way everyone's played the, the golf course. You know, it's nice to see Abraham answer at the top of the leaderboard because right. he plays a similar style of game to me, and I think that's what works around here. Right. But it's nice seeing the big boys play in a different way, um, hit driver on a few holes where they're attacking the golf course pretty hard, where I just don't have the power to play the course that way. But, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, really cool with the shotgun format, so it's, um, everything happens instantly. From so the 54 holes start simultaneously? Yes, absolutely. So everyone is scattered around the golf course and once the shotgun goes off at, uh, I think it's 12 o'clock or 12.05, everyone starts the game at the same time. So it's action everywhere over the golf course. So you can go and follow your favourite player and you've got four and a half hours of live golf instantly around the golf course. Right, being a two-time Hong Kong champion and I'm sure all our viewers will want to know the tips. You just mentioned that the style of play suits it to this game. Tell us briefly, how, how can we score well in this course? Um, yeah, well, like I said, it's quite a narrow golf course. Um, there's a huge emphasis on having the ball on the fairway. I think I think Abraham's only missed two or three or four fairways for the week, which is which is fantastic, and that's what gives him an opportunity to have a look at those greens for his second shot. So I think hitting the ball in play is number one. So however you achieve that, you got to do that, and then obviously scrambling around the greens is always a very good quality to have around around Fan Ling. Right, and you know, as you mentioned, we can hear the music right now. Uh, you know, lift golf represents energy, music, and excitement. But how about do the players? I mean, do they enjoy coming to lift tournaments? Absolutely, we do. Just from the start, it's been so different to what I've experienced most of my career. The camaraderie amongst all the players um, is completely different. We've got the team element, so, and we've got 13 teams of four out here. Um, some teams are kind of based a real little bit around your nationality. So we've got the Australian guys all kind of hanging out together. So there's great camaraderie in the locker room and on the golf course. You really want to fight for your team. So that's definitely a different dynamic, but even just the families and everyone traveling with this live circus, if you want to call it that, is just a much tighter group. And it's really been, um, it's, it's been really nice. Right, I think for those Hong Kong fans who have been to the live tournament, I'm sure there are many coming today, look at all the new structures being put up actually in months, I mean, it's amazing. Um, this, this, the actual uh, scale is much bigger than any tournament in the world. So how does this live uh, event being seen amongst the golf circle right now? 
Yeah, well, they've, they've gone about it in a different way. They're just trying to raise the bar and open up new avenues. You know, we've got three different structures around the golf course. We've got this P54, real high-end structure here on 18. Then we've got the Gallery Club on 17, which is a kind of middle-of-the-road place. And then we've got um, the Birdie Shack, which is situated on number 10 this week. So that's kind of where you're going to have quite a few beers kind of sunk and um, quite a bit of fun had. It gets, gets a bit rowdy out there. So there's something for everyone out here. And the players completely get that. The music's different. And, and we want to grow this sport and take this sport um, globally, what it deserves, and do it properly. So that's what Liv has taken on that, that task. And um, they're doing a fantastic job and really moving the needle of golf. Yes, I mean, I mean, our, your fellow Australian, Greg Norman, who's also that legendary player, also won the Hong Kong Open for twice before, is the CEO and commissioner for Liv Golf. So how much of the inspiration is he to you and, and, and the rest of your mates? Yeah, well, it's been extra special being Australian, being part of Live Golf, especially when Greg joined very early on. Um, to have him as a commissioner has been amazing. You know, from for me at my age, he was the guy that I looked up to. Oh, we all remembered him. Yeah, exactly. So back through the 80s, he was he was a man in world golf, and he was a number one in the world for so many years. Well, so was a shark, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah shark, shark, absolutely. Yes, yeah. So a lot of people call him that still. Yes. So. Um, I actually remember the first time I won the Hong Kong Open standing down here and they gave me the trophy and I saw Greg's name on there and it was pretty emotional for me at that point exactly. because to win around an iconic venue like this and then, then see your hero's name on the same trophy was pretty cool. So no, it's nice, nice right. little connection to have. You know, finally a word about the, the Hong Kong Golf Club. I mean, the past 12 months we had like the World City Championships, the Ramco Team Series, which we also did an interview here, right here on this ground, the Hong Kong Open and now Lift Golf or mega event. So it must be some kind of um, a record. Yeah, it's great that you have a golf club um, with this much tradition. I guess support golf at all levels still, you know, whether it's junior golf, saw so many juniors out there doing a junior clinic yesterday, and then all the professional events and still having the membership allow those events to happen on their golf course is fantastic because we don't get to play some of these iconic places week in, week out on tour. So. It's always nice coming back to a venue like Hong Kong. It's so unique, it's iconic, and um, especially in a city like Hong Kong, it's amazing. The food's great, the, yes. the vibe's amazing, and um, no, it's just really cool to be here. I can tell you with all the people on tour, on the live tour, they've really enjoyed staying in town this week and enjoying everything Hong Kong has to offer. Right, I mean, you've been to many major cities as well. I mean, I know that you were in London in the Centurion Club playing the Lift Golf um, the Invitational Series. How does all these major tournaments and what does it mean to the players? Yeah, it's great to travel, you know. Like at the end of the day, we are still experiencing whatever else is experienced. But sometimes golf courses aren't situated right in cities, you know. So you might be in London, but the golf course mightn't be right in London. So and when you can be in a big city here, um, like Hong Kong, and still get to experience everything during yes. the week, sometimes it's just hotel golf course and you don't get to take in a lot of the, not so much nightlife, but the restaurants and, and um, so forth. So. Um, Hong Kong allows you to do both. Uh, um, yeah, it ticks both, both boxes. Right. I mean, I understand you're from Adelaide and I studied there as well. And I read that you started golf playing at age three. Did you? Yeah. Or, or, or yeah. even earlier? No, no, sorry. So golf's been in my family all the way through. Uh, my dad was a golf professional. So um, I had a golf club in my hands quite early. I played cricket and football, other sports there for quite a few years, but then um, Golf finally got me around that 11 and 12 age, and then um, yeah, and then I was just full steam ahead with golf. So um, that's going to be really cool. In a couple of weeks, we're going to Live Adelaide, which is the Australian leg of the Live Tour, and um, that's at a golf club which I've um, which I played all my junior golf around. So I've got quite a cool little connection with that place too. Right, you mentioned earlier um, the the crowd for Live is kind of different to before. I mean, for many people. Golf is for the sort of the, the businessman, the, the, the retirees and all that. And is this what Liv is for? Yeah, I think they're absolutely driving the age down of the viewer, you know, because that's our next batch of fans that we need to look after. We need to grab them and grow them with, with us. So you see a lot of families out here with children, which is great. Um, so the more we can do that, the more we can look after the health of this sport. Right. And, you know, how's your season going so far? What would be your your aim for this year for yourself? Yeah, well, so my, um, so my season really um, involves being part of this live tour as, as, as a reserve and then coming out and then playing all these international series, which is like a series that sits in conjunction with um, the Live Golf League. It's another 10 events, so that in combined with um, 
the Asian tour as well. So I've got about a 27 week schedule on the road, which is still quite a bit, but uh, no, it's a nice um, balance of different events for me. Well, certainly I have to tell you, Hong Kong welcomes you and many other players because Hong Kong is a very friendly city and we've got a lot of mega events coming through. So do promote Hong Kong when you meet other fans in other cities. Absolutely, I love it here. Thanks for right. having me. Thank you, Wei, for your unique perspective on the lift's first time in Hong Kong. Let's take a break now, but viewers, stay tuned. When we return, Dr. Kevin Ng will be with us to give us his perspective on Lift Hong Kong. Welcome back to our Lift edition of Straight Talk. We had golf professional Wade Ormsby with us in the first half, and now we have Dr. Kevin Inc., medical cardiologist by profession and the president of the Golf Association of Hong Kong. So welcome, Kelvin. Thank you, Eugene. Uh, we're here right before the start of play on the final day of the inaugural edition of the Live Golf in Hong Kong. So what have you made of this experience so far, and this being the, the biggest golf tournament, not only for Hong Kong, but for the whole Greater Bay Area? I think it's been a fantastic event, um, by far the biggest uh, golf event in Hong Kong that I've attended, and this is including all the best Hong Kong Opens that have uh, been held over 50 plus years on a, uh, at this venue. Um, we've never had so many world-class golfers uh, all here at the same time, all playing at the same time. So yes, it's, it's, it's really fantastic. Right, and um, earlier, um, Wade explained to us this is a 54 and 54 holes for three days and a shotgun start. Is this something that make it more exciting for the spectators? I think so. It's, it's very much a new format uh, with the lift golf. Uh, traditionally, as you know, it's 72 holes over four days uh, with a cut and then with different people teeing off at different times. But for most people, if they want to watch all the stars at the same time, teeing off at the same time, different holes, and finishing within four and a half hours is actually better for entertainment. Right. You know, golf in Hong Kong has been what we call as ascendancy because we have Tai Chi Ko winning gold at the re recent Asian Games and the men's team earning the bronze. So how is the game's popularity in Hong Kong right now? And how do events like Live Golf will inspire the younger generation and help the development of the game? For the elite side, it's been on the ascendancy for some time. Uh, for at least 15 years, S surely, slowly and gradually with Tiffany Chan and then of course Tai Chi Ko. Uh, with the Lyft Golf event coming to Hong Kong, uh, it will continue to uh, inspire a lot of youngsters to play, popularity-wise in Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area with the number of golf courses we have combined. Uh, there are a lot of golfers out there, social, not just elite golfers, social juniors, an event like Live brings in a lot of new uh, uh, interested people as well because a lot of people who've come to this event are not golfers. They want to come and attend a mega event with all the music. So it's very, very different and, and it's better for it. Right. So in your view, how, how will you see Lift Golf event on Hong Kong's reputation as a regional ex events capital? Well, I would love, uh, love to see Live come back to Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong has always been a very good regional hub for big mega sporting entertainment events. There's an awful lot to do in Hong Kong. You just need to explore it. And uh, I've been told by a lot of uh, the, the live golf, the golfers and all the officials who've come with them and that uh, at least, you know, 70% of them have not been to Hong Kong before. Really? And to them, they said it, it's been a fantastic experience and they would love to come back. So uh, all I would say is, you know, Hong Kong is a fantastic place to host an event like this. The Hong Kong Golf Club is a fantastic venue. So uh, we hope they can come back. Right, and we know there will be a lot of cranes of television around and I think this event is being broadcasted to millions around the world. And, and I understand there are spectators flying from different parts of the world. So I'm sure you have talked to them, a lot of them. How do they see the live event? compared to, say, our Hong Kong Open or even the Aramco Team Series? What I would say is all three events are different and very good in their own ways. And if Hong Kong can host all three, uh, we'll be better for it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, the events need to come back. We need the support of the Hong Kong Golf Club. We need the support of the government and the tourism board. But if we all work together, these events uh, certainly attract an awful lot of people 
regionally and internationally um, and uh, enhances the reputation of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. You know, Lift Golf seems to be operate in a very different sort of kind of model compared to other tournaments, as, you, as you, you have just said. With Wade was saying that it's a lot of en entertainment, especially for the younger generation, with more excitement and, and concerts and all that. So how would you see all these work will attract, is it effective in attracting a, a younger audience to get into golf and also being participate in a world-class event? I hope so. I hope Live Golf can work in parallel with the rest of the golfing world in hosting different events uh, in, in different ways. Uh, it is already in a different, different format. Uh, and this will certainly encourage uh, people all over the world to take up this great game, a uh, game for life. It's not just uh, a game for the elite. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really a social game. It, you know, it, it is something that we all look forward to. Right, earlier you mentioned that um, Hong Kong golf has been basically on the ascendancy for the last 15 years. And I mean, what, what have been the major pushing factor or put and, pull, put and push factor for this, in your opinion? I would like to think that the, uh, the Golf Association of Hong Kong China has a, has a role in all this, right. but certainly the support of uh, the Hong Kong Golf Club, plus all the other three clubs, Clearwater Bay, Discovery Bay and Sheko Golf Club, and the government, mm -hmm. Sports Institute, the SFOC, they all have, have a hand in uh, supporting the sport and we've been lucky enough to produce some exceptional players um, and gradually some of them have become world-class uh, there, there are too many of them and, and, and to name all their names uh, but suffice to say that there'll be more to come hopefully right you know with, with the recent success at the asian games where hong kong golf becomes tier a sport now that means the government will put in more resources and support as the president of the Hong Kong Golf Association China, what will be your what will be on the wish list to the government? The wish list. Well, the, 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 the wish list is long as my arm, so I, I'm not going to name all of them here. But uh, continued support uh, in terms of financial resources, venues, facilities—they're all very important. Mm -hmm. So there have been like um, four tournaments recently, like with with uh, we've mentioned with the weight and also understand the national games are also coming next year so hong kong seems to be the hub for regional golf so do you I mean, how shall hong kong people embrace this great opportunity um yes the national games is coming and we're very excited by that hopefully we'll get an awful lot of support because the uh, our local team will be hopefully in contention mm -hmm. uh, all the other regional events including hong kong open aramco and now Lift Golf and some very major amateur events will also come to Hong Kong and that will that both well for the sport yes and and uh, hopefully uh, golfers and, and non-golfers alike will embrace the experience of these mega events mm -hmm. and come to enjoy come out to Fanning enjoy the day with us yes. and just now you mentioned that uh, we have a lot of young players have been in the budding stage and are now playing well and I'm sure the Golf Association is sort of instrumental in pushing the actual development of the, uh, the youth programs. So any challenges you have faced so far? Oh, the challenges are ongoing and we've always had challenges. Uh, resources always one and facilities another one. Uh, but we you know working with the different <clears throat> stakeholders, hopefully we will uh, surmount them and uh, continue to improve. Mm -hmm. Actually, Hong Kong being a nation of like seven and a half million population and we're doing quite well for golf, are you surprised that we are doing so well in terms of population wise? I am and I'm not. When you have a good program in place, you don't need uh, a huge population. Of course, we cannot, can never compare with you know, the US, China or all the big nations because population wise, you just don't have the numbers. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the Scandinavian countries, Denmark, four million people. You know, they, they produce all sorts of wonderful sportsmen. So it's not just the population uh, size that matters. Um, you need the right program, you need the right support, you need the right parents, you need the right mentality. Um, all those things um, have to be in place to produce 
elite athletes. Right, and you know Hong Kong has always been known as a, a place of concrete jungle. We don't have a lot of sporting grounds, and I think we're very lucky to have a, a golf course like the Hong Kong Golf, uh, the Fanning Golf Course, plus the other three clubs you have mentioned. Um, so, in your, uh, as you said, you have a very long wish list in wanting things to happen. Anything else? I mean, I'm sure the viewers are being excited to see all this nice venue and, and talk about all these international events. What can we do and what can we help to develop the sport? Um, if you come out to watch the events, whether it's uh, you know, this week or previously or in future, um, like a lot of comments that I've had from overseas visitors, mm -hmm. they're very surprised by the greenery, the uh, fantastic surroundings of the Hong Kong Golf Club and the other, other clubs and that Hong Kong actually is not a concrete jungle. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of country parks, so on and so forth. So uh, space-wise, we have um, golf is an, a sport that requires space, mm -hmm. and uh, space is always at a premium in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, working with the government and the Hong Kong Golf Club and all the stakeholders, we can um, find the right amount of space mm -hmm. for the sport to continue to develop. Right, I'm sure the viewers are really appreciative of the government support in the live event, so that we, Hong Kong actually is on the world map for mega events. So finally, when do you think we will see a Hong Kong golfer playing in the live golf tournament? Taji Ko actually played in the promotion qualifying event for, for live back in December. He wasn't far off to qualify for live events, so I don't think we're that far off. Which is fantastic. It is, it is fantastic. Right. Um, so thank you to both our guests, Wade Armsby and Kelvin Inc. for sharing the insights into the world of live golf. Hong Kong is proud to be able to host this world-class competition and indeed we welcome this opportunity to showcase our city to the world. Have a good evening and see you next week.